Hi there everyone, welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to show you how to call your own web API that you create and use it in a project. We're going to do a simple to-do list project to demonstrate how you can interact with the data from an API. We're going to have to make the HTTP requests using the fetch function in a JavaScript file. And I know JavaScript is not the purpose of this YouTube series and maybe some of you are not familiar with it but it is important to have an idea of how this whole process works. Uh, for this reason, I'm going to pretty much copy a project from the .NET documentation, where I'm going to take the HTML and JavaScript files, modify them, and I'm going to explain you what they do. This way, we won't make them from scratch, because the video would take too long, uh, it would lose its purpose, and this way everyone could follow along and implement this in their projects, even if they don't know JavaScript. So let's start working right now. So let me just create a new project. Uh, we're going to select an API template, ASP.NET Core Web API, click on next. I'm giving the project just a name, like a to-do API project. Click on next and I'm going to leave everything as it is. So the project is loaded. I'm just going to delete this class that is here by default and the controller that we can find here. We don't need them. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a models folder when I'm going to add just one model for our project the uh, to-do item model actually and we're going to create uh, firstly we're going to create a web api with this uh, model let me just give you the name of the model to do item.cs and the model is going to have a public int id property We'll need the string name property for the name of the to-do item. I'm going to make it notable with the question mark. And I'm going to need the bo boolean property to specify if the to-do item is complete or not. So Next, we're going to need to go to the project root and add the folder name data, where we're going to input our context for our application. Naming this data, and I'm going to create a class inside of it for the context. Okay, I'm naming it to do context. Okay, the to do context class is going to need to implement uh, DB context for which I think we have to install here the Microsoft Entity Framework Core. Just wait until this installs. Okay, right now we need to specify here a constructor like this. Uh, what we usually do when cre we create a con uh, context. Inside of the constructor, we write uh, db context options with the name of the context inside. Options and then base options. This implements base options. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the constructor. Uh, below, we're going to need to specify the db set instance of our to do item model that we created. We're going to need to give it a name here for our to do item db set instance. And I think we're going to need to import in that project the models folder, the models, models directory. Okay, so if we go to app settings.json, we haven't connected this to. Uh, we haven't connected the project to a 
database so let, let me do it just here go to set server explorer create a new database and for the server name i'm going to need to open up the sql server management studio okay here is the name of our server let me just copy this and import it here I'm just giving the name to our database, like whatever. Right now, if we go to our uh, here and click on properties, we can find here the name of our connection string. And here we can put it in connection strings. Here we can give a name to our connection string, which I usually do like just default connection string. Let me just copy it one more time here in the properties window let me just paste it and here i'm gonna need to specify the encryption to false because we don't have a password when we connect it to our database okay so what is left to do now is just go to the program.cs file and we will add the service to connect our uh, context with the connection string. So here we're just gonna write builder.services that add db context. We're going to write the name of our context and inside of here we're pretty much just connecting our context with the connection, connection string. Here we put the name of our uh, connection string. Uh, what else we need to do here is, as we can see here, we haven't installed the SQL Server dependencies, so we can just go to dep dependencies and manage NuGet packages. Here we're going to just click on SQL Server and we will in need to install this. Just click on Accept. Okay, we just also need to uh, install the Entity Framework Core that tools to help to be able to access some data that we need uh, when we uh, add migrations and update the database. So just install this, go to program.cs and we can see that here we, also, we just need to, I think now just need to use Entity Framework Core and it all works just fine. Just go to package manager console here and add the migrations, give it a name. The migrations were added, just need to update the database and that's gonna be it. OK, 
Okay, so now if we go to the controllers folder, we can add a controller and we're not gonna do it ourselves. We're gonna uh, use a template. If we go to API and API controller with actions and add it, uh, the controller will be added uh, here. We just need to specify the model class and the DB context. Click on add and we will have all of the methods to do the crowd operations in our controller. Uh, we're not using a service in this uh, project, which would be great if we would do the project for uh, production. But in our case, for what we're doing it, just the controller would be fine. And that's why we're creating it with a template. Okay, the controller was created. Here we can see all of the methods that it has. We try and run the project. Okay, here we'll see the Swagger UI. And we can just test it if everything works okay with our web API that we, are ju we just created. And we'll click on execute, we should see an empty array here in the first endpoint. So yeah, we see an empty array. We could actually just input something in our data so that we have something. Just click on try it out here in the post endpoint and give a name to a to-do item. Like do groceries or something. Then making these complete property attribute to false. And I think this was created successfully. You can check it in the first get uh, API to the item standpoint, and there we see our data. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is go to the root of the project and add add a folder where we're gonna add all of our CSS, HTML, and JavaScript files. So. Uh, this is a practice that we make them inside the www root folder. Then we're gonna add a folder for the CSS. Same thing for, for the JavaScript as well. So of the CSS, we're gonna need to add an add new item. We're gonna need to find here a CSS file. If we go to here to web, I think get um, okay, to content. We see here style sheet, which is a CSS item. Click on it. Just name it like site.css and add. The same thing we're gonna do for a JavaScript file. Just add a new item. We're gonna find here a JavaScript file. JavaScript file, name it site.js. And there it is, and in the root folder, we're gonna add a new item. We're gonna add an HTML file, an HTML page. I'm naming it index.html page. Here it is, just a boilerplate, just some uh, normal HTML file. If we go to launch settings.json, we have here the specify that when we run an application on HTTP or on HTTPS or on IIS Express, on whatever we run the application here, we see that the, uh, that the launch URL here is Swagger. So by default, the application will be run with Swagger. And if we remove it here, when we run the application, the application will actually run on an index.html file that it finds. So if we try to run the application, here, this won't take us anywhere because we need to add, specify something in the uh, in the program.cs so that we can use static files, which are our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So and now it won't work. OK, 
Okay, so let me just uh, go and find in the .NET documentation the project, the to-do project that we're gonna relate to um, here. Go to this web API with JavaScript, which shows you how you can uh, implement call your own API in in a project. And here, if we see here, we have to use this use default files and use static files in order to so that the project will be run on the uh, so this index.html file will appear when we run the project. And if we go to program.cs and paste it down here. Now, if we run the project, we will see our index.html file, which was basically empty and we are not supposed to see anything. But yes, this is what we should be seeing. Okay, so if we go again to this uh, .NET documentation here, this is a project similar to ours, similar with our model and with the web API that we created. But now uh, we need to, we will see here the index.html file that this project has, and I'm copying it. So I'm just gonna paste what I copied from the index.html file to our project. And I'm going to explain you what these things do, but firstly, so that we can see this function. This is an option to add to the items and to see them and to edit them. But we're going to have to actually copy the things from uh, the CSS and the JavaScript file so that it actually works. And then I'm going to explain them and modify them a bit. So I'm just copying the CSS file pasting it down here, just click on save, control save, S, and I'm copying the largest file, which I don't know, this has like 200 rows, 200 lines of codes, and I'm gonna explain what this does here, but so that our page is functional, I needed to copy them in the beginning. So now if we see here, we see in our list, we have our two groceries item that we had created before, so here, each time we add a new item, we make an HTTP request from the JavaScript file to the to our web API, and it stores the to-do item in our web API. And down below, we call all of our items in our web API, and this way they are shown. We can edit them here. So when we click on edit, this edit box appears where we can edit our things here. We're going to delete them. We're going to make them complete by marking this checkbox on the left. And this is pretty much what this does. Okay, so I'm going to start making it a bit visually better. So just naming it to the list. I'm going to actually need to go to the bootstrap to import the bootstrap and because this way I can make things a bit more better visually. And put it on top here on the header. And I'm going to put all of the elements of our page in the container div uh, so that they are a bit more better uh, they have a better spacing. So just a div with a container class. And I'm putting the div pretty much in the end of the body tags here down the table. So everything is inside this container div. And if we save it, here we see still fix our breath more centrally spaced. Yeah, I'm gonna need to put pretty much everything inside a div and to make them in the center of the page. So I'm just making them visually better at first and then I will explain what they do. 
So I'm giving the class, I'm making a flex box, this uh, bootstrap class, so deflex. Then justify content center is also a bootstrap class, which would pretty much put the uh, title in the center of the div. I'm giving it a margin of three to have a bit spacing. I need to close the div. I'm copying it because I'm going to need it to paste it in everything below as well. So I'm just closing the div here. I'm going to delete this add header, we don't need it. I'm going to put the uh, form here inside the div as well. Giving it a bit of more of margin. And I'm closing the div. Here we see things are centrally spaced, so they are in the center of the page. Uh, now we're going to need to do the same thing for this edit form that we don't see now, but we see when we click on the edit button, because this is what we have, that what is being done in the JavaScript. In the meanwhile, we're going to need to add a, we can add a class to this button, button info to this add button, so it looks visually a bit better. This is a bootstrap class as well. Okay, now we're gonna need to center this edit form here. Okay, just the same thing again. Now it's in the center of the page. We can give this save button a class of uh, We'll make it like a green because it's a save button, like button and button success. As you can see here. And this uh, paragraph of counter, which counts the amount of items, which is being done in the JavaScript, and we can center it as well. I'm just going to delete this table header. We don't that don't look good to me. Okay, so we'll do just the same thing with the table here. Everything is centered now in our HTML file. Then I just try to add another item. The counter is updated. And just to see here what thing, how things work, in this first form here we add items. So uh, in this form, this, if we see this, this is a post form and you see the, each time the form, uh, the submit button is set, uh, the set item function from JavaScript is being called, then this action, JavaScript void that you see here, just basically says that nothing will be called because a method in the JavaScript would, would be called in this case. And we see here the same thing in the edit form here, where we take the ID, the checkbox, the text, we will send data to basically just, we'll just call this update item function here. Here we see the counter and the to dos uh, in the table. Then in the end of the file, we see this get items a function that is being called from the JavaScript that we have in the JavaScript, which will be called. And now, um, just let me fix a bit the side.css file. Okay, so this sets the edit form to none, to the display to none, so that we don't see that in the beginning. I'm just gonna delete the few things that we don't need here. For the table, I don't think I need any of those here. I'm going to remove the, bo the borders as well. What I okay, what I can do in the HTML and the body text inside of it will just give a nicer background to our uh, page. The background image is going to be actually is a page where you can see uh, you can see uh, linear gradients 
simulator so this is just a so there are specific pages where you can simulate this different backgrounds and you can take the code from there so here we see here kind of it looks like a good background this kind of gradient linear gradient like background and i can just copy the code here and paste it and we see our application here okay i'm just gonna need to paste it in the beginning and the app the page looks actually good in my opinion okay in this star here which specifies basically everything in the page uh, i can make the color of the text to white because the black color looked a bit uh, not good in this background but i will need to specify here in our forms that are white we don't see the text so i'm just gonna need to go here to our add and edit forms and specify the style of the text to black style color to black this way we can see here when we import the text and do the same thing down below in the edit form and try and edit things right there they work well now it's actually the, the hard part of the application these functions that we had in our index page all these functions are specified here and you don't because javascript you maybe don't know but you can see the idea of things here how they work so in the top of the page we have specified this uri which is the uh, address of our web API where we uh, make the requests and we have a array with our to do's so here I don't know here we can see the to do items API to do items which is the address of our web API where we do the uh, HTTP requests Try and add something there and if we see here everything is displayed again each time so each time we add something there we make a request to this address of the web api and here we see that it is shown here it's displayed here if we see the first function get items this fetch function javascript function fetches uh, has as a parameter this address uri and it takes a json from it uh, and then if the data, the request was successful, this display items data function is being called. And if the request was not successful, this catch uh, cons error dot, console dot error will be invoked and we see this in our console. But if this was successful, the display data uh, would be called the method. Let me just make the screen really bigger. And here the display items function will be called if the request was successful and what we do here is just uh, get the 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 to do's the div with the to do's as an id that we had in the index page and then this display count method function here is being called that displays uh, the items that are uh, the number of items that we have this one or two to do's which takes data dot length as a parameter then we have a button created above for each item inside this data that we have in our web api uh, an input would be created firstly a checkbox input it's going to be disabled and it's going to take this property item that uh, the is complete property that the item has then an edit button would be created would take when it's been clicked when the edit button would be clicked this display edit form would be invoked and the same thing is going to work for the delete button the delete button would be would be created for each item when it's been clicked this delete item uh, function would be invoked 
And then we see here that uh, whenever for each item, a row would be created in the table. And in each row, basically all these lines here do is just for each row, they add this checkbox, this text, and these two buttons, the edit and the delete buttons that we have here. And we can go on top of the page and see here again the add item function. So whenever time we add an item, we have here an object that takes the values of that item and a fetch, request, a fetch function here would uh, make an HTTP request to the URI, to the our URL. Uh, the request would be of type post. The headers contain the information of what uh, would be accepted in the contact in the content type and then this json that stringify item just basically turns our data that we put put in our web api that we send and makes them as a, a json string format and then if the request was successful we just get the items and uh, just get all the items again in the delete item function here we have just go to a specific URL with an ID and delete that element and then if it's successful we get the item if not we get an error and the display edit form which was invoked when we clicked on the edit button here just will take the value of that element the ID the name the check that if it's check or not and will be set the, setting the display to a block and here we see the update item function when we update an item here. So we just take the values of that item that we have updated and we make a fetch. And in the fetch function below, we make a put uh, a HTTP request to the web API. Or we specify the headers. We put our data, we make our data as JSON string format with this JSON.stringify item. And the same things, then we get the item and just like in other functions. I will just be fixing, uh, doing another extra thing for the design of the app. Uh, I usually use this font asset library a lot when I do things in the front end. And if you find, you can firstly just import this link, this library, and put it in the HTML uh, file here, just in the header. And this allows us to put icons in our application, which are just visually very great looking. So this edit and this delete uh, buttons here that we have, they are created from the JavaScript for each item. So we're going to need to modify them in the site.js file. So here uh, we can remove this inner text. We don't need to have a text in there anymore. And we can click, make it like uh, edit button that inner HTML. And here inside we can put the icon tags, actually, uh, how they are written in HTML. The icon tag I'm going to use here is going to have a class of FA, FA pen, which you can see in Fantasm website, which is just the icon of a pen, basically. Below I can give uh, this uh, edit button a class, which I can do by clicking that class list, that add. And inside I can add multiple classes to it, which are going to be a button and button info or something. So they look pretty much the same as the background. You can see the pen better. If you click on save then. Okay, just updating it here. And we can see this icons that look pretty much better than it would look with just an edit uh, text there. We can pretty much copy this and do and modify it to do the same for the delete uh, buttons. The name of the class of the icon would be FA Trash. 
and the button would be the class of the button would be button danger. Uh, so it's this red bootstrap class. Okay, here I just need to make it delete button, not edit button. Not leave it as it was. Now if I save this, we can see that both of the two icons working pretty much well. And this is the end product of our application. So that was all for this project. I hope, I hope you know now how you can implement your own web API in your project. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you like this content and I hope you have a great day.